Jesus loves me, he who died, then who stayed white. He has lost away my sin, let his tonight on me. Yes, he does love me, Yes, he loves me. Yes, he does love me. The Bible takes his You know, love is the most powerful emotion. And we all know, you know, love conquers all. And sometimes we don't feel the love of people around us, but always remember, Jesus loves you. And that's the most precious love we can receive. I'm not going to ask you if you did the quiz. So we're going to do it now. You ready for the quiz? Yes, Jeff. Only, <laughs> Christy, you ready? Okay. All right, chapter 13, review, study, quiz. Fill in the blanks. Jesus knew that the time had come for him to leave this world and go to the heaven, I don't know. to the Father. Yeah, but close enough, we'll take that, but go to the Father. Mm -hmm. Good good job. Having loved his people, well, sort of, but it's a three-letter word. Oh. I'll give you a hint. Starting with O. Having loved his own who were in the world, he showed them the full we kind of focused on this last Wednesday. Extent. The full extent. Thank you, Christy. Extent. Of his love. Of his love. Yep. The devil had already prompted who? Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that who? So not uh, the Lord had put certain things only certain things all things all, all things. things under all things. his power. power power yeah under his power yep good job here comes beatrice welcome miss jones <laughs> she, 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 I'm just, i just admitted her um you think we should give her penance right what 500 times i must not be late <laughs> Remember those days. What did Jesus do to his disciples after dinner? He was. He gave them some fruit for yeah. dessert. I could do with some fruit now. <laughs> <laughs> he prayed for them. He washed their feet. Yes, see, see, see. Oh, yeah, see. he washed their feet. He, 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 maybe he sang a song for them afterward, but he washed their feet. Welcome, Beatrice. Thank Welcome. you. Welcome, Miss Jones. How are you? I'm good. I finally got through. Oh, what happened? I took happened? a while myself, but I started early. 
My, that's why. My. That's why I advise all the time. Log in early. Technology. Anyway, you're here. That's what's important. Okay, okay number to... number three. Yeah. Which, which disciple did not want Jesus to wash his feet at first? Peter. Yeah, Peter. you people are so bright. It's Peter, yeah. Yes. What did Jesus say to Peter to convince him to let him wash his feet? Did he say, oh, ye of little faith? No, no, no. Did he say, unless I wash yeah. you, you have no part with me? Yeah. Right, yeah, that's yes. what he said. Your feet are dirty and needs washing. <laughs> All the other disciples are letting me wash their feet. What's wrong with you? No, it's B. Unless I wash you, you have no power with me. Yes, Though our sins be like scarlet, they shall be white as snow when he when he washes. True or false? Jesus did not know which disciple would betray him. False. False. He knew from false. the beginning. Jesus is our teacher and Lord. True. Uh, true. True. Jesus told his disciples that they should also wash one another's feet. True. 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 Have you ever had that done to you? Yes, I had it. Oh, done. what a blessing. What a blessing. Yeah. I've had it done and and um I've done it for in fact, I did something for the first time this week. I had a petty Pedi, um, Manny Pedi. Manny Pedi. <laughs> I, I, you know, anyway, that's another story. Yeah. Jesus set an example for us to do. True. True, yeah. The servant is greater than the master. False. False, yep. We will be blessed if we follow what we know about Jesus. True or false? True. True, True yes. We do not have to accept all of God's messengers. We do. We yeah, so it's false. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it's false, yeah. Jesus was troubled in heart because one of his disciples was about to betray him. True, true. True. False. Yeah. True. He was troubled in heart. Imagine he spent three years with these people and one of them will, will betray him. How did Jesus indicate which disciple was going to betray him? Because the others said, who is it? Who is it? How did, what did he tell them? Well, how he, we washed have to, what have to do. he washed his feet? No. no. He gave him a piece of bread to eat, which he dipped in the dish. Uh-huh. Yep, that's what he did. B. That, yeah. He called out his name. No, he put his hand on his bed. No. It, the answer is B. Yeah, he gave him the bread. Yeah, and he told him, the one I gave the bread and dip in the dish, that's the one. Jesus told Judas, Donna, now is what yeah, you're yes, about to do, yes. do it quickly. Quickly, yeah. Yeah. Great. You're a thief and a robber. No, he didn't tell him that. May God forgive you. No, you will end up in hell. No, he said, what you're about to do, do it quickly. Quickly. True or false? Jesus is glorified by his death on the cross and resurrection. True. 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 Yeah. Jesus told his disciples that they could follow him where he was going at this time. No, he, he tell them they couldn't follow him. So at that, that time, was... right. Later, the later he said, later you would follow me, but not. So yeah, that's what. The new command Jesus gave his disciples is love one another as I have loved you. True. 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 And that command is for us too. If we say we are disciples, know, we are yeah. believers, that command is for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. All people will know that we are his disciples if we love one another. Mm -hmm. True. True. Peter told Jesus that he will not lay down his life for him. True or false? False. Yeah, false. Sure. He said, I will lay down my life for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have for tonight. Yeah. So, how was your week? Anyway, anything happened this week to to kind of remind you? That's what we were talking about last week, Wednesday. Hey, Sharon, look like you're in a car. You muted. You muted. Well, yeah, I'm I'm driving, so I cannot read or anything, but I'm in class. Okay. <laughs> 
We have already given. Hey, Donna, welcome, Donna Francis, Senator. Twenty-eight. On mute. Uh, that's right. Are you back in Antigua or are you still in Atlanta? Hello. Yeah, welcome. Are oh. you back in Antigua or are you still in no, Atlanta? No, I'm actually in Florida. Oh, you yes. <laughs> back in Florida. Okay. Well, good to see you tonight. All right, people. So, yeah, anybody have anything that happened this week that, you know, we'd like to share with us? Well, as I was sharing earlier, okay. I um, did for the first time in my life, I'm 74 years old. I'm going to be 75 in October. I and had a petty, I had a pedicure. And I, you know, I was thinking, people say such a good thing about it. I was expecting a, a wow feeling, you know? Uh -uh. It was just something, you know, I'm not going to do another one. <laughs> it's not worth it. I can cut my own toenails and I can wash my own feet kind of deal in warm water. But it was an experience. I like it. I, I like it. I I feel so pampered and spoiled. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a female thing. Yeah, without being male chauvinistic. Yeah. Um, Except when I were, you know, here, mainly uh, the people from Southeast Asia have these stores, um, either Taiwanese or whatever, whatever. And the lady refused to cut a few of my toenails. She said, I'm afraid they will start to bleed. <laughs> so I said, well, okay, I'll do my own. <laughs> but it's a nice thing to have somebody, you know, uh, massaging your feet. I'm not talking about it cutting your toenail, but massaging your feet. It's relaxing. You know, Very the, relaxing. Yeah, yeah, there is some kind of, uh, I forgot the name, where, you know, it helps re uh, relax you. And there is some kind of exercise of reflexology, I think. Um, yeah, something Donna? like that. Yeah. yeah, and they touch the noobs and whatever. I, I love it. I felt well, maybe maybe the lady who didn't mind did, did not do a good job. <laughs> maybe you need to you yeah. need to do it again. Okay. Yeah. yeah, maybe. No, I'm not making any commitment or any promise. Okay. Don't hold me to that. But I did another thing that I've been wanting postponing for years. I, I signed up with a trainer at the local gym. And it's, okay. I'm having my first session on May the 8th. Better late than never. Exactly. <laughs> I, need, I need it, you know, I need it. So anyway, <laughs> any other stories to share? How is your dad doing, Donna? Uh, when we came to Florida, he had a short of bed issues so he went back into the hospital but he was oh. released today yeah so he's in there for five days five days wow yeah okay well we'll continue to pray for him yes all right on that note let us go to the lord in prayer all right before you go to the lord let me say that i got water a Praise steady you. flow yeah so that I am good with the water situation now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And to, I was telling you before that I took a long while my computer has completely shut down. So I'm listening on my phone. Well, we can we can hear you. We can see you. So it's all yeah. good. Mm -hmm. It's my all good. Just got, my son just got home. So they're working on the problem. Okay, well, let's pray that they will fix the problem. Yeah. Anybody else have anything before we go to the Lord and pray? Could you continue praying for my friend Derek Moore? He's still in the hospital. That's where I'm leaving now. So pray for healing and pray for deliverance. Yeah, but we got to pray the Lord that the, that Aaron, that Aaron home. is home also. So we want to thank God for all his kind mercies. Amen, amen, amen. I just want to give a short testimony that I had asked God to, I had put in his hands, Um, my son had to 
work at his bazaar, school bazaar. And that day, Saturday, we had like a mini storm. Rain was falling endlessly. And so his sister went to help him, but their feet was in about a foot or two of water, water just under the tent in the school. And um, and I just came home. I didn't say with them. And I prayed. I said, Lord, stop this rain. Or if even the rain has to fall, don't let them get sick. And let people come and buy the stuff they were selling. Jira pork and Jira chicken. They didn't prepare it. We didn't prepare it. The school organized parents and they did it. He, we collected it and they sold it. And um, the pork was all sold out. But thank you, Jesus, for answering prayer. And the chicken, some remain. And we, they gave it to the the um the benedict's old boys who were seen about the disco in the night and it was a success and i just want to give god all the glory and the praise that everything went right it says first bazaar so he he <coughs> is learning how to do that as a teacher and i thank god for his blessings that day with all that storm we had on saturday yeah for sending the people and keeping them safe and neither of them got ill. So thank you again, Jesus. God is good. In God all is the good. time. All the time. Okay. Last call. Anybody have anything they want to add to our, for us to pray about? Okay, let's go to the Lord and pray. Lord Jesus, how you love us. How you bless us, how you protect us, how you provide for us, Lord, in spite of who we are. Father God, you've heard all the answered prayer and we give you the glory, Jesus. You've heard about what our needs, Father. And we know that you already knew, but you just love to hear our voices and we raise our voices up to you, Lord, believing that you have already started to answer in a positive way, Father God. Thank you for solving Beatrice's water problem. Thank you for letting Aaron come home, Lord. Thank you for protecting Donna's son and daughter-in-law in that stormy weather. Father God, we lift up Derek that you will continue to touch him with your healing power. We lift up Donna's father, Lord. Bless him, heal him, Lord. Give him peace and comfort. Guide the doctors and the nurses who are taking care of him, that they would treat him in the right way. Father, our world, the weather conditions all over the world is so contrary. We ask that you would give the people, especially in India who are having such a hot summer, that you would give them some peace and comfort, Lord. Jesus, you said that peace be with you. And we believe you, Lord. We believe you. In that day, we would have peace. In the meantime, Father, strengthen our faith. May we continue to look to you for our peace and for all the troubles and wars and disasters and protests that are going on around, especially at the, the young people in the university campus, Lord. Stop it, Jesus. In your name we pray. And Father God, we join our voices in repeating that prayer you told us to pray. Our Father, in heaven, heaven. Heaven. hallowed heaven. be thy name. Thy heaven. kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay, my dear friends, before we go into chapter 14, let's quickly um, review the main points from chapter 13. First, we learn that love and service are action words. A lot of people give it lip service, oh, I love you, and that's it. No, love is an action word. Service is an action word. And then we came from God and Jesus has prepared a way for us to return to him. 
believe it. This time we spend here is temporary. Yep, and when we confess our sins and repent, we we fully clear, we are fully cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And see, that's one of the things other religions have a hard time believing. You mean all you have to do is confess and repent and you go, okay? Yeah. That's what Jesus said. And Jesus knew every detail of every situation. So far when we've been studying John and other chapters, he knew every, every detail, where the donkey was, where the room was. He knew every detail, who was going to betray him. No one or anything can surprise him. He knows it all. He's the omniscient God, the all-knowing God. Yep. And people, we must obey the command of Jesus to love one another. How hard is that? I know there are some people it's kind of hard to love them. But think, I always look at myself in the mirror and, and I say, in spite of who I am, Jesus loves me. And that gives me now the, the strength to love those people who are kind of hard to love. When people observe how we love one another, they will come to know Jesus because we are showing them something different than what they are accustomed to. And we can follow Jesus now. He told his disciples, you will follow me later. Now is later. We in the later. We can follow him now. And we need to just do what he tells us to do. He speaks to us every day. You know, some people talk about instinct and gut feeling. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. It's amazing when you obey what he tells you to do. Miracles happen. Great things happen. And please let us not make promises we cannot keep. Our word is our bond. Our word is our bond. Thou shalt not bear false witness or thou shalt not lie. That's a commandment. And especially when it hurt you but to speak the truth. Then you really know that you're speaking the truth and you're a follower of Jesus Christ. So any thoughts before we go into chapter 14? Uh, we have 31 verses in chapter 14 and we have two and well Sharon cannot read so two, three, four, five, six of you. Five verses each and the last person will read um, six verses. So Donna Maria Yes, yes. One to five. Okay. Um, Reverend Joseph, six yes, to sir. twelve. Yes, sir. Christy, thirteen to nineteen. Do Donna Francis, twenty to twenty-six, and Jerry, twenty-seven yes, to thirty-one. Okay. Let's do this. Okay, chapter 14. Yep. Verses 1 to 5. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also, and whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have not known my father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, so as the father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me? Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, so as the Father, 
do you not believe that i am in the father and the father in is in me the words that i say to you i do i do not speak on my own uh, authority but the father who dwells in, in me does his works believe me that i am in the father and the father is in me or else believe on account of the works themselves truly truly i say to you whoever believes in me will also do the works that i do and greater works than this will he do because i am going and i will do whatever you ask in my name so that the son of bring glory to to the father you may ask you ask me for anything in my name and i will do it if you love me you will obey the obey what i command and i will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever the spirit of the spirit of truth the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you i will not leave you as orphans i will come i will come to you before long the world will not see me any more but you will see me because i live you also will live Donna? At that day, ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas saith unto him, not is a carrier lord how it, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come unto him and make our abode with him he that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings and the word which ye hear is not mine but the father's which sent me these things have i spoken unto you being yet present with you but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all the things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you peace i leave with you my peace i give you i do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid you heard me say i'm going away and i'm coming back to you if you love me you would be glad that i'm going to the father for the father is greater than i i have told you now before it happens so that when it does happen you will believe i will not speak with you much longer for the prince of this world is coming he has no hold on me but the world must learn that i love the father and that i do exactly what my father has commanded me come now let us leave the word thanks of the lord for the people world. of god thanks be to god so you know, I find this chapter in particular is so appropriate for what's going on in our world today. Look at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It's so easy for us to, when we look at what's happening in the world today, to have a troubled heart. Donna's father is not doing well. Sharon's 
can't see her grandchildren. You know, her friend Derek is, 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 is ill. We had water problems for a little bit. We have people protesting all over the world. We have war in Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Gaza and Haiti and who knows where. You know, pastors and, are being persecuted, even murdered in, in India and some other places. So it's so easy to be tempted for our heart to be troubled. But our Lord Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. And think, why would he say that? Because he's concerned about our feelings. And he knows that we will be troubled. So that's why he's given us that comfort. Do not let your heart be troubled. And then he provides a way for us to deal with the troubles. He said, in this world, you will have trials and tribulation, but do not worry. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Um, Beatrice, can you look up John 16, 33 quickly, please? I did not give anybody that verse. I saved it for you, Beatrice. John 16, verse 33. You want me to read it? Yeah, you want me to read it now? Yes, dear. Okay. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I would highlight this verse in my Bible because believe me, you're going to face some trial and tribulation. Some of us have already faced a lot, but it's, it will come again because the devil is on the attack all the Brother time. Lincoln, excuse, what's the chapter 16? Chapter 16, verse 33. Yeah. In what book? In what book? John. 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 Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks. And then how do we achieve this peace? We're going to trust in him. Trust in him. Donna Maria, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, please. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, that, that's our look to Jesus. If we focus on what's going on, we're going to get so consumed with what's going on in the world. Sometimes you're going to turn off the news. Because I can't remember the last time I heard, so I heard something positive on the news or encouraging. So we turn it off and pray and open the Bible and read and trust, trust in the Lord. I want to read verses two and three for you again. I love it when, in our Bibles where when Jesus is speaking, it's in red. And mm -hmm. you don't need any explanation. Just listen to what he's saying to you and me. And he's saying here, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. People, have you ever imagined in a quiet time what heaven is like and what your room will be like when you get there? Anybody? Yes, no? Mm -mm. Well, that might be a good thing because it's impossible for our brains to conceive what heaven is like. It's, there's nothing we have experienced or seen will kind of even resemble what heaven is like. It's so much better. All This is why we have to trust that it will be better than here because Jesus is, has gone. He's gone. And he prepared a place for us already. It's ready. It's prepared for you and I. And, and there's enough room for all of us. There's enough room. It's unlimited. 
All we have to do is to believe and accept him. Does he keep his promises? Yes, he does. Have you ever broken any promise? No. Anybody? No. no. We may think so, but it's not that he, his promise is broken. It's because that is not his plan for us, son, you know? He didn't promise it. He didn't, yeah. put, didn't prophesy it, you know? Our Lord cannot lie. He's not a man. So it's impossible lie. for him to lie. The devil is the liar. The devil is the liar. So he promises that he will come back and take take us to be with him. Remember, remember when we studied Revelation? He will come and reign and reign for how many years? Back when we studied Revelation, a thousand years there will be peace. No, a thousand years. Yeah, no fighting, no war, no no hot summers. Everything will be perfect for that that thousand years, and he's going to take us back with him. He keeps his promises. And my friends, this is our ultimate hope that one day we will be with him in heaven. Amen, amen, amen. One day we will be here and we will meet all our, all our relatives and friends, all the people who we know, neighbors who have gone on before us. And the, and the word says, what a day of rejoicing that would be. Think about when you see somebody who you haven't seen for a long time. That feeling. That hug. Isn't that precious and so unique? Like I got to see Donna last month in person in Atlanta. That was so special. We, and unique. Somebody saying something? Have we lost you for a while? Um, you are breaking up sometimes. Are you hearing me? I'm hearing you. Anybody else not hearing me? No. I'm we hearing you. Well, then it's going to be your internet, Jerry. Yeah, Jerry is his internet. The signal must be getting a little weak. Anyway. A few minutes ago, you froze. Well, Jerry, I only froze in your internet, not for everybody else's internet. So I just want to mention one thing as you read chapter 14. For those of us uh, who conduct funerals, this chapter is a favorite that we read. Congregation, you know, do not let your hearts be troubled, trust in God. And it's really directed to those who are grieving for the loss of a loved one. So it's very popular, not only in the Presbyterian Church, but I've been to funerals in the Methodist and the Anglican Church, and it's the same. John chapter 14, selected verses. Thank you. Well, it's the Christian Bible. No matter what religion it is, they read, they read the Bible. Anyway, so... Verse 4 tells Jesus is the way to heaven. Reverend Joseph, would you read John 14, verse 6 for us? Yes, sir. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He is the way. No one. The only way is through Jesus. There is no other way. Only sim simple not complicated. One way through Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. In verse, Jesus is the only way to heaven. There is no other way. And then in verse 7, we read about, he talks about, I and the Father are one. And again, proof of the Holy Trinity. The three in one. Verse 8, Philip asked Jesus to show them the Father. Poor Philip. Now, he has lived with Jesus, the Father, for three years, heard all the sermons, seen all the, the miracles, and he still did not know that they are one. And up to today, you know, there are many people who don't believe in the Trinity today. It's, the, it's something that the Lord inspired by the Holy Spirit. But if he said so, so, I and the Father are one. 
And that's where our faith and our belief comes to play. That my God says so, is so. So, and, and in verses 9 and to 10, we will see more proof that Jesus and the Father are one. Christy, would you read Acts, I'm sorry, John 17, verse 11 for us? I will remain in the world no longer, but they, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by, by the power of your name, the name you have me, so that they may be one as we are one. Imagine this. This is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. The night that he was going to be arrested, beaten, spit upon, all, you know, humiliated the Lord Almighty. And who is he praying for? You and me, that we would be one with him. You think of what he asked for? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? Yes. I want to hear one person saying yes. Mm -hmm. I want to hear you say Yes, I believe. Yes, yes, I yes, believe. I believe. Yes, yes, Thank I you. Believe. Thank you. So, and all we have to do is believe and have faith. So, what that word believe, what does that mean for you? Like, let's say you meet somebody who is an atheist. And oh, so you say you believe in Jesus. Tell me more about that. What does that mean? Anybody want to would like to share? What does the word believe mean? That you believe in Jesus. It means to trust and obey. It means to have faith and don't worry. Okay. To me, belief in the Lord is the most important thing is, as the word says, you can't see. You can't see, but you have to believe. We can't see but we have to believe. But, you know, I would put the same, Donna, we choose. We choose to believe because we have free will. We are mm -hmm. the only living organism that the Lord created and gave the, the gift of free will to choose. So we choose to believe. We choose to believe. You know, think Did about it. Yes, Sharon? Think about this. You all, everybody drive a car, right? A vehicle. You put the key in the, the, in the switch. Do you even doubt it's going to start? That's the kind of belief we're talking about here. No doubt in our mind that he is God. He is who he said he is. He is our savior. He died on the cross for all our sins. Our sins are forgiven if we confess to him. And, and many of you have already shared about faith is believing what you have not seen and what that Hebrews chapter 11, the chapter, the faith chapter, as we, as we call it. If you, you, you should read it again, Hebrews chapter 11. Believe, have faith in the Lord. So, all we have to do, um, Jerry, would you read Acts 2.41 for us? Reading Acts 2.41, those who accepted his mes message, and that is referring to Peter, those who accepted Peter's message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. That's on the day of Pentecost. And, and Jesus told them, you would do greater things than me. He told them that, and this is an example of no sermon recorded in the Bible that Jesus preached where so many people were converted. But Peter preached his first sermon and over 3,000 people were converted. And Jesus, because in, he came in the power, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why when we are filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, when we receive the power of the Holy Spirit, great things happen. And then in verse 13 and 14, imagine this. 
He said, ask and we shall receive as long as it's according to his will. You see, he's our father. He's not going to give us something that he knows is going to hurt us, would he? You, those of us who are parents here, would you give your child something that you know is going to hurt them? No, 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 no. No. Similarly with Jesus, he knows. So as according, that's why he said, according to his will. Um, Jerry, you in Acts, read Acts chapter 3, verses 6 to 8 for us, please. So it's a six to eight, right? Chapter three, verses six to eight. This is when Peter and John arrived at a gate beautiful and they saw a man begging for money. Then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk and taking him by the right hand he helped him up and instantly the man the man's feet and ankles became strong he jumped to his feet and began to walk then he went with them into the temple courts walking and jumping and dancing and praising god And the key there is he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The disciples used the power of the name of Jesus Christ to do all their miracles. We have that ability. We have that privilege in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ all the time. So, in verse 15, we talk about show, we show our love for Jesus. How? By keeping his commandments. By keeping his commandments. But how can we keep his commandments if we don't know his commandments? We got to learn his commandments. We got to know his commandments. We got to review his commandments, you know, in the Ten Commandments. And then what did he say is the greatest commandment? John, Donna Maria, read John, love Donna Maria, read John 13, verse 34 for us. Verse 34, chapter 13. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, and, the, and that ye also love one another. Love one another, not as the world loves, but yes. as Jesus. I have loved you. As Jesus love. You know, Moses told them an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Somebody hit you, hit them back. Somebody steal from you, steal from them back. But no, Jesus said, a new command I give you. Love one another as I have loved you. But to know about his love, we got to study his word and his love. Then in verse 6, 16, you know, in... Counseling is big business today. Counselors make a lot of money. They're very busy. You're going to make an appointment to see them. But guess what? We are blessed to have Jesus himself as our counselor. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we do not need an appointment, nor any health insurance. Yeah, we All we have to do is call on him. And I love that when Peter was sinking in the ocean, in the, what did he say? Help me, Lord. That's the most powerful prayer we can pray at any time and from any place. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I can't tell you how many times I prayed that prayer during the day. I am saying the same thing. I, I, when I get up in the morning, I feel like, well, I can't make it. I say, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord, Brother Lincoln, again. And you come to mind and say, Brother Lincoln says, that's the best prayer. And I catch myself saying that to open my eye and get up, you know, because yep. sometimes I feel like I just can't make it. So I say, Lord, just help me. Help me. Help me. Yes. And, and then he said, I will send you another counselor. You and me are his helpers. He will tell us 
call this person. They need to hear your voice. They need some encouragement. Have you ever had a call like that? Where somebody, you, you were feeling kind of low and down and then just you just get that call and it lifts you up? Just the sound of the person's voice. They don't know what was going on in your life. But the Lord told them to call. And you, and you know, I can't tell you how many times I've had to, I'm glad you called. And people have said that to me. I'm glad you called. And, and to pray. Um, recently, I had this experience that I'd like to share with you. As I told you, um, I'm running the, the annual golf tournament at our church. So one of the things I do, I'm visiting all the businesses in, in the neighborhood, asking for support and sponsorship. And oh my God, the Lord is blessing, blessing this, this event. We have over 70 uh, prizes already sponsored. And it's on the May 6th. But I walked into this lady's store. And she knows me. I've been there before. I don't go there every day or every week or every month. But once in a while. And somehow the conversation, she asked me for advice. She was going through some family issues, some family problems. I'm not going to get into any details. But I made a recommendation what I think. She said, thank you. And I prayed with her right there in her store. The Lord uses us and he prevents opportunities for us. We just got to be aware. Trust in him and he will give you the words to say. Don't walk away. Don't, because once an opportunity is gone, it's gone. It's not going to come back. So, be a counselor for somebody. Be a mentor for somebody and trust in the Lord that he, he will tell you what to say. You don't have to get a certificate. You don't have to go to university. He is our teacher. He's our teacher and Lord. And then in verse 17, he said, Jesus lives in us who believe in him and accept him as our Lord and Savior. Reverend Joseph, would you read Romans 8 verse 9 for us? Is that you, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if in fact the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. The spirit of Christ. Remember in Romans, in our revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you open, I will come and sup with you. We're going to open up. He's not going to force himself on us. We have to open up and say, come, Father. I love that song. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Uh, um, Christy, 1 Corinthians 3.16, please. On mute. Do not, do not you know that, that yourselves are God's temple, and that God's spirit lives in you. Our body is the temple of the Lord. His spirit lives in us. That's why we got to take care of the body. Take care of the body. Strengthen the body. So it can be a good vessel. A holy vessel for the spirit. No, and then you see the, the similarity here for 316. What other verse is John 316, right? There's a similarity. Jerry, first John two twenty seven, please. Unmute. Reading first John two twenty seven. As for you, the anointing you receive from him remains in you. And you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and as that anointing is real, not counterfeit, just as it has been, just as it has taught you, remain in, remain in him. Remain in the word. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Remain in the word. Don't stray from the word. 
And then he, prom he promised in verse 18 again, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Has anybody ever left you or forsaken you? <laughs> yes, my husband left me. <laughs> yeah, we all have, a, some of us have had that experience. Broken relationships, <laughs> people who you trust have left you. But Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And in verse 19, he rose from the grave so that we too will rise if we believe, will rise up to be with him. For people who believe in Jesus, death is not the end. Death is not final. It's a transformation. We, well, share, this we share this shell of a body, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and release the, whole, the soul to go and be with him in heaven for eternity. Amen? Amen. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Yeah. Then, verse 20 could be a little controversial. Some people have a little, when you talk about that day, nobody knows the day, but that day. Um, Donna Maria, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3, please. Chapter 2, I'm reading from chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You know, a lot of preachers, false prophets, use the circumstances of what's happening to us and proclaiming the end is coming. Have you heard that? Yeah. The end is coming, but no one knows the day. Jesus said no one knows the day. Reverend Joseph, Matthew 24, verse 36, please. Yes, sir. But concerning that concerning the day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. What I do know, what I believe, what I trust is that every day I live on this world, I finish every day is one day closer to that day. And those of you who receive my verse for the day, you will see how the end is said, one more day to go. That's the message I'm sending. One more day to go to heaven. One more day for Jesus to come. One more day. We don't know. But every day, every minute, every second is closer and closer. We, but that's where, that's where belief and faith comes in. He said so, he's coming. And a day will come, it will come. It will come. Yep. So, so that, that is not an expression only in the New Testament. If you read the prophet Isaiah, there are three times in Isaiah that he talks about on that day, referring to the end times, of course. And this is four to five hundred years before Jesus Christ. So the concept of on that day was around for a long time and nobody knows when it's going to be because that part of the prophet Isaiah's writing is known as the little apocalypse. And apocalypse is the same word for revelation. Thank you. Thank you. And Reverend Joseph just read Matthew 24 verse 36 for us that no one knows today. So, and then he in 21, he just told them about that. And now in 21, he thinks God is love. God himself is love. God himself is love. Um, Jerry, Romans 8.35, please. Romans 8.35. A very important section of chapter 8. Okay. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And that's what keeps us going. 
And we know nothing can separate us from the Lord. Christy, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, please. For Christ's love humbles us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. God's love is compelling. You can't help it. When you have his love in you, you can't help but love. There's no hatred in you anymore. And now you're only doing good, positive things when you have his love in you. It's compelling. And then in verse 22, we see Judas. This is not Judas Iscariot. This is the other Judas. And he's asking a logical question. Why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Some people may even ask this today. Why do some people believe and others do not? Jesus explains in the following verses, Jesus will not only reveal himself to believers, he will also indwell in them. Those who obey him and love him will know him. And then people who do not love Jesus will not obey his teachings. Some make up their own doctrine. Some make up their own Bible, you know. There are religions who have their own Bible and their own and they add chapters to the Bible too. They don't obey Jesus. So they can't, if you don't obey him, you don't love him, you don't know him. Verse 25. He had been teaching and mentoring his disciples for three years. They were living with him for three years. They have experienced the full extent of his love. Donna, Maria, mm -hmm. would, you, would you read John 13, 1 for us? I'm reading from the book of John, chapter 13, verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loved them unto the end, his own. These men, when he called them and he said, follow them, follow him, they dropped everything and followed him for three years and they never turned back away. They stuck with him for three years, his own. And verse 26, uh, let me read this verse for you because again, uh, they're reminding us of but the Comforter, God is the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. How do we remember things? What do we do to remember things? Information. Repetition. We repeat it. We repeat it. And we listen. Notice, you know, listening is the most used communication skill, but it's the least taught. And look how the Lord designed us. Two ears, one mouth, which is a subtle indication that we should listen twice as much as we speak. So the Holy Spirit will be himself will be our counselor. He will send his messengers and he will continue our education in him. Learning is an ongoing process. It's not an event. And many of us are teachers. That's why we give homework, to reinforce the learning. So we need reminders time and time again. We have the word. We have the word. Repetition again is the most effective form of learning. And then in verse 27, his peace is given to us. His peace, not the peace of many, but his peace. When he visited his disciples after his resurrection, his greeting was, peace be with you. Reverend Joseph, I gave you three verses to read. Verse 20, verse chapter 20, verse 19, verse 21 and 26. Would you read that for us, please? Yes, sir. On the evening of the, of the, the 
say the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the law jews jesus came and stood among them and said to them peace be with you eight days later his disciples were inside again and thomas was with them although the door were locked jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you then he said to thomas put your finger here and see my hands and put out, out your hand and place in it in my side do not dis- uh, believe do not disbelieve but believe thomas answered him my lord my god jesus said to him have you believed because you have seen me blessed are those who, who have not seen and yet have believed three times he greeted them with the same greeting peace be with you why do you think he had to do it three times why not why not only one time he's god first he knew they were troubled and scared and then again reinforcement three times peace be in case you forget peace be with you in case you forget peace be with you so we never going to forget and then in verse verse 28 he, he has come back he told them he'll be back he has come back he's with us he's with us today tonight wherever we go he is with us that's another thing we have to believe and have faith and trust that he is with us we don't see him but we can feel his presence with us that peace we hear his voice without any sound speaking to us he is with us and then in verse 29 everything jesus told his disciples came to pass he told them on the third day i will rise again he is with us again just as he told them so they and us will believe everything that he said has come to it has come to pass and verse 30 he reminds us that the devil has no power over jesus he failed to tempt him in the wilderness and then he failed again we will learn when we we get to chapter 17 in the garden of gethsemane you know he tempted jesus again in the garden in the garden of gethsemane and then verse 31 jesus demonstrated his love for his father when he decided to do his will in the garden um christy would you read luke 22 verse 42 for us Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. That's another powerful prayer that we need to pray. No, my will, Lord, but your will, because you're smarter than me. You know all things. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but you know. So your will, no, my will be done. That's another powerful prayer. I mean, the Lord's prayer: Thy will be done on earth as it is in. heaven heaven thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven so so he obeyed his father up to the point of death and that's where he expect from us to obey him up to the point of death in all things be obedient to him so my friends that brings us to the end of this chapter what touched you tonight what kind of hit you strong tonight between your eyes kind of deal What do you remember most about what we shared tonight? Well, we have the commandment that we love one another. Love one and another, okay? He has loved us. As he has, that's the key right there. Not a, the world has a concept of love. Jesus' love is different. We love as Jesus has loved us. Anybody else would like to share what hit you tonight? What? resonate with you and verse 18 he says i will never leave you comfortless amen 
I will never. Never. So when we feel comfortless, we can reach, call out to him, Father, comfort me. Mm -hmm. Give me some peace and comfort. I need some peace and comfort right now. Anybody else? What touched you tonight? Um, How were you fed? When, yeah, when Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world give it. Mm. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be free. Yeah. So you see. When we want peace, we turn to Jesus. Turn to Jesus. Yeah. And he said, not as the world, because the world is a convenient world. Mm. When it's convenient, they will do it. When it's not convenient, when it suits them, but not with Jesus. Mm. He loves us. And his peace is with us. Anybody else? Thank you for sharing. How were you fed spiritually tonight? Verse 16 there. And I will ask the Father, mm. and he will give you another counselor. Uh, Jesus, go to Father. Uh, the Holy Spirit will guide us. Amen. You see, we have that counselor available, but we need to call on him. We need to ask. Thank you, Christy. I don't want to call on the rest of you, but I love yes. to hear it. Well, for me, it's um, um, verse 6, where it says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Amen. He's the way. Thank you. Sharon, you got anything? Unmute. I guess she's... Beatrice? Yeah, okay. I, I was just thinking about what Donna said. Donna, Donna, Donna Antigua, not Donna Maria. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I mean, in my own personal life, both of my parents have passed away. And they passed away in their 60s. My two older brothers are no longer with us. They also passed away in their 60s. An older sister in her 60s. But the Lord is with me. Amen. And I, know, and I believe that one day we have a reunion in heaven. And what a day of rejoicing that, that would be. Yes. So, folks, some of the main points from today in terms of reviewing. Number one, we will be faced with many trials and tribulations in this world. We're living in a fallen world. This is not heaven. But we have a loving and compassionate Savior who will take care of us. Psalm 90, read Psalm 91. Yep. He will embrace us. And then heaven is real. Heaven is real. We who believe are going there by the grace of Jesus Christ. He has prepared a way for us. There was a, a Reverend Randy Pope from a church here, a big church, perimeter church here in, in Georgia. He made a statement that kind of stuck with me. He said, I rather live my life believing in Jesus and believing there is a heaven. Die and find out there is no heaven than live my life not believing in heaven. Die and find out there is a heaven. And I can't go. And I can't get it. <laughs> yeah, we believe that if Jesus said so, it is so. Yep. We believe. We need to believe and have faith. And all these things will be given to us. We don't have to pay for it. We don't have to work for it. Just pray for it. Just pray for it. And believe. And then if we do not ask, we will not receive. If we do not ask, we will not receive. He will give us anything we ask in his name and according to his will. You know, I coached a lot of salespeople in, my, in one of my careers. And that's one of the things that I always do. If you don't ask, you're not going to get. You're going to ask for the sale. Ask. Similarly, if you don't ask, we're not going to get. 
And then the Holy Spirit indwells in us if we let him. If we let him, he's not going to force himself in us. If we let him, he's going to come and dwell in us. And we, some of you said it already, he will never leave us or forsake us. In spite of all the wrong things we do, he's always there waiting for us like the prodigal father for us to come back to him. And God himself is love. He loves us like no human. Don't try to compare God's love with any human. It's impossible. And then we have 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, full access to the Holy Spirit for any advice, any counseling, to assure, this adore him. And we have the peace of the Holy Spirit. That's why when all the world is happening, we can be at peace because we have the Holy Spirit. And finally, everything Jesus says has come to pass and will come to pass. What has not yet come to pass will come to pass. That's our faith, that's our belief, that's our hope. So my friends, I would like to have Donna Maria close us in prayer tonight. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Savior, we come before you tonight thanking you, Lord. Thanking you for all your mercies and all your blessings, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this group. We thank you that we can meet and we can talk and boast about your love and your blessings and the mercies you give us. We thank you for the comfort we get from this group, dear Jesus. And Lord Jesus, tonight, we ask you to guide us, direct us this coming week. Protect us from the noisome pestilence, dear Lord, and protect us from the stay of the fowler, Lord Jesus. Lord, hold up our families, our children, our spouses, our grandchildren, lest they dash their foot against a stone, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we ask you for your blessing this coming week, Lord, so that next week we may meet again, Lord, to learn your word, to study your word, to help us enrich our lives, to be better Christians, Lord, to serve other people, Lord Jesus. And Lord, in the end, that you may tell us, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Remember Amen. next week, Reverend Amen. Jerry is teaching chapter 15 next week. Okay. Pray that I will have a good internet connection from Jamaica. Most likely I'll be at my brother-in-law's hotel and they have good internet service there. Have a good night. We're praying for your father, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Lincoln, Lincoln, safe travels, Brother Lincoln. Donna, your dad will get better in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Believe, believe and receive. Yes. Yeah. I love believe your hair, Donna. It looks beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>